close the dishwasher. What's up guys? Today, we are in my kitchen and we're gonna be building my very first BMX bike. So, I feel like where we should probably start, before I even discuss why I'm building a BMX bike, we can talk about that later. Um, let's talk about what frame we got, all right? So, if you don't know, I used to ride for this weird BMX company, a bunch of drama happened. I don't ride for them anymore. So I got to pick whatever frame I wanted on the market. When I choose BMX parts, it's normally supporting either companies that I really appreciate what they do in the scene or riders that I really like and want to support. In this case, S&M is kind of an OG in the bike world and I chose an S&M frame because they've done a lot for BMX. But to be honest, I wanted a Sunday Aaron Ross frame. It was too heavy. It would have been funny for the memes, but this is going to be a weight weenie bike. So. It was between an S&M, because they had specs that I liked and the frames were light, or a Matt Ray frame, but the Matt Ray frame they didn't have in the color that I liked. Honestly, they didn't have this frame in the color that I wanted either. I wanted blue, but I wound up with Trans Black, and it's gonna look great. This is an S&M BTM frame. I think it weighs somewhere around a half a pound. By that I mean, by that I mean four and a half pounds, not a half a pound. That would be ridiculous. What I look for in a frame, 21 inch top tube, uh, not too low of a standover because I don't want to have like a super long seat post showing and a decently short back end I want to say this one's somewhere around like 13 Shorter back ends make it a little bit easier for doing like spin tricks pulling up manuals uh, a little bit less stable when you're doing like really big jumps and stuff, but I Ride like a little girl now, so who cares before we throw this on the stand first thing we got to do is pop some bottom bracket bearings in So go to the garage and start hitting stuff with a hammer you're gonna see a common occurrence in this build, and that is gold profile parts. We've got a gold profile bottom bracket um, that's now all over my floor. Just gonna lube up these bearings a little bit. Got some good old park tools grease. Making a mess of your mama's kitchen since 95. I remember when I used to think that like doing stuff with bike parts got me greasy. Now I work on cars and like this is like a clean job. Remember I used to use my mom's dining room table as like my workbench for working on bike parts. It was pretty great. We'll get her in there. It's probably a better way to do this, but uh, yep. It'd be nice if I had like something, uh, yeah, I do need to put something underneath it. Otherwise I'm not gonna be doing nice things to this frame. Don't judge me, it's been a while. You gotta get creative. Now that that's taken care of. This comes with shims because a lot of the newer frames have uh, bottom brackets where um, they're very, very large. To like, I guess the rear ends are wider to fit like a wider frame and you don't wanna have this little guy in here wiggling around. So it comes with like a little shim. You guys may have already seen this in my story. Probably the coolest part of this build is this spindle right here. It's titanium. Profile makes a bunch of titanium stuff. I've always wanted titanium parts in Profile. I've never really pulled the trigger on it, but um, hey Taylor. So uh, I have a titanium spindle. What's the purpose? Save a little bit of weight. And it's pretty baller. But anyway, I used to run Profile cranks, stopped and switched to another brand back in the day when I broke one of my Profile crank arms that I had, but it was like the third time someone had used it. Like I bought it from someone who bought it from someone and they were all rusted out and then I had them painted, so between that and all the Connecticut winners, that's probably why. But anyway, they have new cranks out now. I think these ones, maybe, are they the totem? Are they the totem cranks? The big cranks? We'll look it up. Column, they're the column, not the totem, they're the column cranks. So we're gonna be running the column cranks. Um, I'm not gonna forget to put my spline drive sprocket on, because that would suck. Profile, gold. Talked about this in the other video. Big fan of Profile. Profile makes great stuff. They're local in Florida, and they started with building race cars. So I love them for many reasons, and their parts are honestly just like the nicest. So anyway, that doesn't go on first. All right, it's been on. That goes on first. I'm gonna use the cranks to pull the rest of the bottom bracket in because I got sick of hammer on it. Got to support the local legend Chad DeGroot with a rad deco seat post, uh, kind of black and gold, you know, to go with the theme. And then a cool just like black denim style seat. It's kind of low key and chill. There's this company that actually made this seat that would have looked great on this bike. It was like a black suede that had gold writing and stuff. Really, really sick seat. I think I used it for like kindling wood or something, I don't remember. Another dude I'm very fond of, Mike Brennan, got me some lightly used 
I don't have time to get new ones. Uh, Merit P1 pedals. I really like the micro neurals. They seem to hold up pretty well, and this is what I've been riding for a long time. For the most part, like when I'm picking out BMX parts and stuff, like I said, it's usually like companies that I want to support or riders that I want to support. In this particular case, I normally would never buy anything BSD because they used to have a rider. I don't know. I don't know if he's still relevant or if he even still rides for them anymore. But uh, he like threw a hissy fit because I made a shirt with a giraffe on it and then he said that there could only be one giraffe in BMX and then like threatened to sue me and started a bunch of drama that really really bothered me and this was like years and years ago. But Alex D is really cool and this is his signature tire and I love watching him ride and again with the micro neurals I like that in a tire and uh, it's folding and it's light and I'm a weight weenie so. I don't know who's going to be watching this video, if it's going to be like my BMX fans that mostly hate me because I stopped riding for a while, or if it's going to be car people, because like I could be education and be like, oh look, this is what a folding tire is, it's got a Kevlar bead and it's lighter and it folds, or I could just be like, I put tire on bike and ride. I don't know where I'm going with this video, I'm just filming. It's funny how I used to like complain about, not complain, but I used to think that putting a tire on a bicycle wheel was something that I would consider hard. After mounting car tires and like being at Ebisu and having to mount multiple tires per day on car wheels, especially like reverse mount wheels or whatever they're called, my, uh, my three piece works over there, they're not easy to mount. So now a bike tire where I don't even need to use a tire lever because usually folding tires are easy like that. <laughs> Just mounting a tire with your hands. Uh, learning to appreciate the simple things in life. Just like that. I was hoping to get like a nice popping sound of the bead going on, but guess not. Nice plastic hub guard for the rear. These just press on, although I don't know if I can do it one-handed. Um, obviously, rocking another Z coaster. This time, got a little fancy and went with some more profile titanium bits. So I got a titanium driver on this one, as well as a hollow axle. Save a little bit of weight because I'm a weight weenie, and some sun rims. The man himself, Chad DeGroote, built this wheel. Again, probably one of the only people I would trust building me wheels at this point. You need wheels built? Mr. Bikes and Boards. He does a fine job. I will say though, it does appear as if this frame has quite a bit of tire clearance. I think a lot of newer frames have this kind of like little, uh, whatever it's called, like indentation here, just so if you run a wider tire, you don't have to worry about that. I definitely went a little bit extra, and instead of just getting a normal headset, I had to kind of go above and beyond, and I got... Man, I can't do anything right now. I'm really tired. So apparently these are like ceramic bearings. I'm guessing they're supposed to be better and last longer. I'm gonna be honest, I was that guy where I went, I looked at all the different headsets on Dan's Comp, and I picked the most expensive one. If you don't know, that's actually a pricing tactic. Some companies will just price their stuff more expensive than everyone else's, so you think and perceive that it's better. But assuming that this is a ceramic bearing and not the same exact bearing that every single other company uses, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that there is probably no advantage that I'll notice, but knowing that I have a ceramic bearing, so. These are Odyssey R25 forks. Would have been funny to do R32 forks, but I like a little bit steeper, just for like nose manual stuff. This is where it starts to get exciting. Can look like an actual bike. Do up my expensive bearings. I'm pretty tired right now, if you guys can tell. My energy is slightly just declining through the video. It's approaching 1 a.m., but I'm very, very excited to build this bike. One of the reasons why I'm building a new bike, I just don't have the best memories associated with my last bike. And this is where my bike will start to look like a bike. How exciting. I'm Spacer Gang Master, all about the spacers. Look at that. On the stem. But I've also believed in a bigger spacer rather than bigger bars. Think about it. Would you rather have this much extra weight or this much extra weight on handlebars? Probably have you around a handlebar. Got a rad profile stem. I wanted gold, but they're sold out of gold right now. So I'm gonna wait for more gold to come in. And then we'll do gold. It seems like a healthy amount in there. Not too much, not too little. A lot of this stuff's kinda hard to do on the stand, so I'm gonna have to redo it anyway once the bike's on the ground. Never had a profile stem before. I always wanted one. Now I have one. I went with Simone's bars from Sabrosa, uh, mostly just for spec purposes. 
I, I do really like Simone as a rider though, and I like Subaru as a company, so there's many reasons. But I believe they're 20 inches wide, so I won't have to cut them down, which is nice. And then I wanna say I did like a 9.2 inch rise, which is perfect for me. Nine's a little small, nine and a half's a little big. These are nice. So, I'm getting there, almost done. Exciting stuff over here. I know that building a new bike, especially like now that I've been riding more, is gonna make me really excited to go ride and kind of push me to go ride more than I have been. New bikes just kind of make things exciting, so I'm pretty stoked. I like money, and these grips have the same name as my frame, so I thought they'd be cool. I used to run these grips forever ago, and I liked them. They're nice. I came up with the idea earlier to use brake cleaner to put my grips on. Um, never really done it before. Probably not the best for my hardwood floors. Sorry. Um, but uh, yeah, it actually works really well and it dries almost instantly. So as opposed to the WD-40 trick, the zip tie trick, or the hairspray trick, I do think brake cleaner is one of my favorite tricks. I guess the only pain butt thing to do right now would just be to finish the chain since that'll be easier to do on the stand and then the rest I can just do with it on the ground. It got late and I got busy with stuff so I don't know where I left off with the bike but poof, it's done. And look at how great it looks. Probably isn't the best lighting and probably doesn't do it the best justice but I'm extremely happy with it. Everything's tied together nicely. Um, feels pretty good. I haven't really gotten to ride it around much and uh, right now I'm in a rush because I'm already on the road while you're watching this to head to Super D. It's like a 20 hour drive so cool little touch. If you guys notice this, let's actually send it in Japanese. And you know, the translation may not be accurate. You know how like sometimes when you translate things to other languages and it may look like kind of dumb, but here's the thing. So all the JDM haters, the oh, translation's not accurate, all this stuff, but all the Japanese people do like direct translation stuff in English and that's why they have like these funny phrases on their cards that don't really make sense in English like I can't think of any examples, but if you look at the cars, you know what I mean. It's, it's like the direct translation stuff doesn't look cool. So it's actually more JDM to have something that doesn't make sense in another language than to have something that did make sense. But anyway, um, it's rad. I weighed it in. My old bike weighs about 24 and a half pounds. This one weighs about 24 pounds. So about a half pound lighter. Not as light as I thought it would be in terms of uh, compared to my old bike. I guess my old bike's a little lighter than I thought. I think these tires are just a bit heavier than the tires that I have on my other bike. I have some like crazy super light folding ones, but it's rad. I'd go ride it for you, but I literally don't have time. I have to walk out the door and leave right now. And I'm filming this clip so I can close out this video so I have something to upload tomorrow. It does look really cool outside though. I feel like you could see the colors a little bit better. Don't know if I'll have a video tomorrow since we're on the road, but uh, that's it. Love bugs everywhere. Go away. When you say